Hello and welcome to Union Solidarity International. My name is Walton Pantland and today I'm speaking to Paula Geraghty of Trade Union TV about what's happening in Ireland. We've heard a lot about Ireland and austerity, but we don't really know what the picture is. What's, what's happening? What's it like on the ground? The Troika and IMF came into Ireland in late 2010, and since then we've had a number of budgets, and they've all been about austerity. They've all been about attacking workers' conditions, dismantling things as we know, it, such as health services, education services. And you know, the, the attack on workers' rights in particular has been quite vicious, and we're really seeing the, the, the cost of that uh, um, at the moment. We're facing our next budget on December the 5th, and just before then, on the 24th, this Saturday, the 24th of November, we're having a demonstration, a big demonstration organised by the Dublin Council of Trade Unions. And the executive of the Irish Congress of Trade Unions have unanimously come out and backed this. Um, this march has been organised by a host of people, a group called the Spectacle of Defiance and Hope, a really fantastic, energetic, bright, wonderful, colourful group um, of community activists um, from all over, the, all over the country. Communities Against Cuts, the Campaign Against the House and Water Charges, and, and a plethora of other groups. And I think that there's been lots of small little protests happening in Ireland. And I think that people kind of finally feel we need to bring all of these issues together because at the end of the day, everybody, everybody's been affected by cuts, left, right and centre. And I think the feeling's coming, it's really coming around to the feeling now that people have to unite together and that the old fashioned trade union values of solidarity and injury to one is an injury to all is really kind of regaining that kind of currency that had been lost for a while I think um, in Ireland, mainly due to the Celtic Tiger, you know, the false artificial bubble um, that existed there. Um, and, and I suppose, like with this budget that's coming in, like a lot of a lot of people, they're, they're, there's a narrative in Ireland that, you know, everything is the fault of the Troika and the IMF. When, to be honest with you, really, you know, the budgets that came before that, which were organised by the Fianna Fáil government, um, Fianna Fáil Green government before that, you know, they were pretty vicious and nasty too. And there isn't really that much difference between those type of budgets and the budgets that are there now that Fianna Fáil, sorry, that Fianna Gael and the Labour Party are implementing. There's obviously a similarity and links between what's happening in Ireland and what's happening in Southern Europe and Portugal, Spain, um, Italy and particularly in Greece. Um, do, you, do you keep abreast of what's happening there? Do you feel a sense of, of, of uh, solidarity or common purpose with, with trade unions and activists in those countries or do you feel isolated in the Atlantic Western fringe of, of Europe? Well, I think there is a difference in, obviously there's a difference between the response to austerity in Ireland and what's happened um, in the rest of Europe. Um, we see massive demonstrations in Spain and Greece, um, especially on November 14th, absolutely massive. And nothing really happened in Ireland, maybe a few little solidarity protests. Um, and I think there's two reasons for that. One is um, that a lot of unions were putting everything into this protest on the 24th of November, which is uh, 10 days after the European general strikes. Um, but also that there hasn't been, you know, that much um, national response to austerity. There's been lots and lots of different smaller protests. And to be honest with you, some of them are quite big. When you think about, for example, the Waterford protest, the Waterford Health protest, uh, Waterford City is, has a population of about 45,000 people. Just two weekends ago, a third of the population of Waterford came out to protest to save their regional hospital. And that's 15,000 people. It's a, it's Waterford, Waterford's not that big. And it's a hugely significant event. And the reason why so many people came out is that it's like death by a thousand cuts. People just thought, we've taken this, we've taken this, we've taken enough, now that's it. You're taking too much. And in the southeast area of Ireland, generally, loads of little hospitals and primary care centres downgraded or closed down to be amalgamated, those services to be amalgamated in the Waterford City Regional Hospital. And uh, so people made all those sacrifices, and now this has been taken away or threatened to be taken away from people of the southeast. And so people just said, enough is enough. If we don't take a stand now, we're going to lose everything. And it was a really, really remarkable protest. I was very lucky to have been there and just to, to see it. Everybody was there. People getting out of the 4 by 4s the, the pensioners, people in wheelchairs, people came out of nursing homes. It, it was 
it was a huge wide, society wide representative protest and um, I'm not sure if this is what happens in the rest of Europe but um, it's, I think it's a sign of things to come so there was another very significant, very important protest um, by disability rights activists in Dublin recently. Um, and this was on foot of an overnight vigil by disability activists in Dublin um, about a month ago, I think. Um, but thousands of people came out from all over the country, from as far south as County Cork, from Donegal in the north. Uh, a huge amount of people came out um, to insist that they want rights, not charity. That being disabled means that you have rights, um, that you don't have to rely on people to, to help you, that the state is obliged to look after, look after people. And to stop you know, taking away services, um, for example, whether it's home health services, special needs assistance services in, in schools, because people want dignity. They don't want to be funded to exist and to survive. They want to have a decent quality of life. Um, so everybody, it's very difficult sometimes for people with, with disabilities to come out and protest, but I'm telling you, they came out in their numbers. And I think that's what's terrifying the government at the moment, um, just the, the people power, because peop they haven't seen it on this scale. And on the same day that this disability rights protest happened, there was another protest beforehand called Waterford Gives a Shirt, uh, where people were bringing up their shirts. And again, it's another part of the protest movement coming from the South East to the, the Irish government saying stop cutting our health services and then at four o'clock there was another protest um, for, to, to stop the privatisation or the giveaway of our resources and um, there's a private company who wants to build an oil rig in Dublin Bay and you know there's resources there let's use them to fund our services stop handing them over to the private sector and then at six o'clock there was a very oh, very emotional very you probably have heard of this case of the Indian woman um, Savita Halapanavar, who died about three weeks ago in a hospital in the west of Ireland. Um, she died eventually of E. coli and septicemia, two nasty, horrible, horrible diseases. And she was a pregnant woman. Um, she, wanted, she wanted to have a child. She wanted to have more children. And she went in and she was miscarrying and she asked for a termination not once but several times and the Irish medical system said no and she died. So Savada's death has touched a really a really raw nerve in Irish society um, because six successive governments have refused to legislate um, on a case called uh, Miss X from 20 years ago when a 14 year old pregnant teenage woman, girl, um, wanted to leave Ireland to have an abortion uh, and use the DNA to prosecute um, the, the rapist. Um, and the European Court has told the Irish government that, you know, they're not, live, not, 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 not living up to their human rights obligations by legislating. Basically, the Irish government has just been cowards on this issue. And you know, we, we, we thought, you know, after all the institutional abuse, after all of these issues, we thought that, that the grip of the Catholic Church had, had effectively, you know, withered somewhat. But it's still there. And women's lives are at stake. And this is something they said that could never happen, and it has happened. And people are thinking, you know, this woman died, and she could have had more babies. You know, she and her husband is back in Ireland after, you know, you know taking um, Savita back home. And he's so dignified, he's looking for a full public inquiry. He doesn't trust the Irish Health uh, Service, understandably, after, um, after losing his wife um, in those circumstances. And there was a protest of 20,000 people in Dublin, which is very significant, 20,000 people. Men, women, children, you know, grandparents, people from all walks of lives and in particular the Indian community have been very vocal on this and you know it, it's just affected so many people and there's I remember one woman was saying you know why did a migrant woman have to die you know there's something very poignant and horrific about this that women you know still die because they're not they're denied the right to a termination. It seems to me that despite a lot of difficult things which are happening in Ireland there is a, a real determination amongst activists um, 
to fight back and also to to join the dots to, to mm. connect the issues to each other and to connect themselves to to each other and connect campaigns together and uh, and and yeah really really form what you call a wave of people power that, that actually challenges this austerity uh, is that a fair assessment um, I think people are, are joining the dots people understand they have small issues but if they want to win their small issue they have to unite with all the other issues and to be honest with you they're not small issues they affect people's every day-to-day -day life um, whether or not it's you know ha getting a bus to school accessing home health services so they have the dignity to stay at home if you're in the workplace and you're under threat of you know extra pay cuts you know pe 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 people have been pushed and pushed and pushed and you, you get a, you get a whiff in the air if you like of people thinking enough is enough um, that th they've gone too far we have to stand up for ourselves um, and that's why I think that this Dublin Council of Trade Unions March is so significant on Saturday um, it's a pre-budget demonstration this budget will pro not probably be an austerity budget and people are saying look we don't want any more we've just seen mass emigration um, we've just seen so many young people leave increase in education fees um, life is just getting much more expensive and particular single mothers you know they've just been cutting down on on payments they've been cutting down on education services and you know people have just said enough is enough thanks paula that's um, it's inspiring and it's it's it helps us to know that uh, across europe there are people resisting this and that by working together hopefully we can um, develop a better way and a better future for everyone thank you and thank you very much